This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 161, Relationship Math. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there, welcome in. Oh, I'm so glad to be hanging out here with you. It's been a week, folks. We made it through the first full week back post spring break with the kids. We've been having some wild Midwest spring weather, as we are wont to do at this time of year. There's the roller coaster of life when you have a nephew down the street with cancer, although he's doing really, really well. Some of you keep checking in on me, which is so sweet. Thank you. He's doing really well at the moment. We have local elections here in our town for school board. And you know what that means, right? Which is so weird. We used to just be nice about that stuff, right? Now we're all acting like rabid animals about it. It's just wild. Kids are doing standardized testing, there's spring concerts, all the activities are starting. It's all just very springy. So much shifting, so much changing. It's mostly good stuff, just a lot of rocking and rolling around here. So, of course, I figured might as well do some totally silly things like redo my website, (laughs) get some new photos taken for my business, just revamp things around here. And I have to tell you, sometimes when inspiration strikes, right, you just can't argue with it. You got to go with it. I have so much fun stuff coming. Talks, some new courses, programs, we're redoing things. So I will just say this, Fierce Calm Project is going to be better and different. It's all, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be great stuff. So Stay tuned. I will be sharing more about that with you um, probably come summer. Yeah. So anyway, enough about that. Let's get into it. So I have no idea if this was a good title (laughs) for this episode, Relationship Math. Um, But I had to pick something. So, you know, there we go. What I meant when I say Relationship Math is the very official super scientifically backed math of thirds, which is totally sarcasm. This isn't official or scientifically backed, of course. But this is one case where it really doesn't matter. I find this kind of shakes out and it seems to hold pretty true across the board. And really the point is more that it's so enormously helpful to think this way that honestly, the actual formality of it, it really just doesn't matter that much. So Here's the magic formula. You ready? All right. A third of the people are going to dislike you. A third of the people are going to be completely apathetic about you. And a third of the people are going to love you. See what I mean? So fancy. (laughs) So official. Relationship math, right? The interpersonal rule of thirds. So think about this. When you were in school, looking around your class, there was a group you just didn't gel with, right? A group that you knew but didn't have any strong feelings about either way. And then there was a group that you really connected with, had fun with, and hung out with. Are you with me? And same thing vice versa, right? About a third of the class didn't really care for you. A third were like, oh, yeah, there's Kelly, whatever. And a third were your friends, your pals, even some of those were probably just like really friendly acquaintances, right? That's how it goes. And I have found that this stands up in the office, in the neighborhood, with the parents of your kids' friends, 
in organizations and community get-togethers, with your family, with your extended family, with your in-laws, the rule of thirds is just kind of always in play. I've also found that this can be really helpful when I talk with my kids about the people they're meeting and dealing with at school. So when they describe a run-in with a kid on the bus or at lunch, I'm like, oh yeah, that kid's in the dislike bucket. All right, no biggie. It's not personal. It's just what it is, right? We all have the dislike bucket and there's somebody who goes in yours. Or if we see a kid that they know from school at the grocery store and I ask them, hey, who's that? Sometimes my boys are like, oh, that's just so-and-so. I have math class with them. And it's just neither here nor there. They aren't excited to go talk with them, but they also aren't like, oh my gosh, get me out of here. Apathetic, neutral. And other times they're begging to get someone's phone number or hang out with someone outside of school. And it's like, all right, this is someone we need to foster and nurture a real relationship with. This one belongs in the love bucket. So you see why the math is totally irrelevant here, right? Who cares if it's actually thirds? It's just a matter of buckets, really. Who is this person? Which bucket do they go in for me? And hey, this isn't a judgment of character, right? We're not here to categorize people for the sake of like superiority or belittling or anything of that sort. This is just a matter of focus, Because when we begin to find the third that we love, we can turn towards them. Like, for instance, how about a really meta example? When I'm preparing a podcast, right, or if I'm creating a new program, I don't think about the third that will think it's dumb or the third that have no feelings about it either way and aren't going to engage with it. No, I think about the third who love and want and need this kind of work in their lives, who are so ready to feel better, who would love to work with me, who would love to solve for the problem of anxiety. It's just so much more compelling for me to envision exactly who I work with, the clients who get the most out of what I offer, and to speak directly to them every time I talk, every time I write. It's such a waste of time for me to get caught up in trying to convince someone who's apathetic or worse, trying to convert the haters into the lovers. I need to just let them go if I'm going to show up for my people in the best way possible. Like you listening to this, you are my people, right? This again, this translates to all the things. If we spend our days trying to convince the family members or neighbors or coworkers that we are amazing, that we are likable, that we work hard and are good parents and do, in fact, make for great presentations and holiday dinners. If we focus on them, we miss out on connecting with the family members and the neighbors and the coworkers who already love us. Are you with me? It's a lose-lose. We disconnect from the third that's totally in sync with us because we aren't investing in them. We aren't with them. And we hustle to convince the apathetic and the haters, which is just a colossal waste of energy. So this is an episode more about awareness than anything else. Like getting aware of how the rule of thirds plays out in your relationships. It's super helpful. It can help you identify the people that are not your people. You can find the people you know who go in the dislike and the apathetic buckets. And you can, are you ready for this? This is big. (laughs) This is important. You can just let them go. You can let them be in those buckets. I know you know this in your mind, but think about this. Really consider this. You can let the dislikes and the apathetics be. It's fine. Think about all the things in the world. Ice cream flavors, politicians, movies, flowers, 
hot celebrities. Like there's literally nothing that we all agree on. Okay. Chocolate ice cream has a rule of thirds. A third of us love it. A third hate it. And our third are like, meh, I could take it or leave it. Brad Pitt. (laughs) The rule of thirds applies to him, you guys. And Liz Gilbert. And Chopin. And all of the Scream movies. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Some people don't even know about them or care in the least. This is true. Like, you know someone who doesn't dig Chopin or Scream. Or chocolate. It's weird, but they exist. So if you're with me on this, if you agree, if you can wrap your head around the fact that some people hate popcorn and yoga and the mountains and down pillows, then stay with me. Wouldn't the same be true of you? Like, why not? Right? So can you let them go? And why or why not? This is a worthwhile place to get curious. Spend some time with this question. Can I let them go? Because this is a huge stumbling block for so many of us. We just spin in hustling and convincing. It's no good. Now the flip side is, can you fully engage with the third who love you? Can you show up fully and be wholly present with them? Can you go all in with them, just like double down there and commit all the way with them? When you let go of the other third, you'd be surprised what it can free up for the third that are your people. You'd be surprised how much more you have for them, more everything, energy, motivation, attention, capacity, all of it. It's like your natural resources skyrocket because you're putting them in the best spot. And you're the most effective from there. We lose sight of this because we spend so much of ourselves trying to convince the third or the two thirds, I guess, right? To come over to the one third, which is utterly useless and totally ridiculous. But when we stay with the third of the people that love us, The third that we love, we get all of the natural like vigor and energy right back. It's like a magic trick. Engage with what you want and enjoy. And it's like, boom, you feel great. Try to convince and manipulate and convert apathetic haters. You're completely wiped out. So the other wild thing that sometimes happens is that when you're fully engaged with the third that just click with you, you are far more likely to invite the apathetic or even the haters to come over for another look at you. It's when you let go of them and when you turn your attention fully towards what works that others might get curious. Because when you're in hustling mode trying to convince them and convert them to love you, It's like they don't want a damn thing to do with you. But when you kind of ignore them and you just go do your thing, then they're like, hey, wait, (laughs) now I'm curious. Sometimes it happens this way. There's no guarantee. We can't go all in with our people in the express interest of converting the haters. Like that's not going to work. It has to be real. It has to be genuine. But I'm telling you, This sometimes is a like wild side effect. It's just kind of hilarious. Now, I want to acknowledge something here. And that is that staying with a third can be harder than it sounds for some of us. Like to fully engage with the third who love us. We kind of shy away from that. We kind of hold ourselves back from that. Like we're hesitant to go all in on the sheer joy and support and connection that's offered there. Our minds are wired to scan our environment for the negative, right? For what could go wrong. We're constantly on the hunt for the worst case scenario. This is called the negativity bias. 
And because of this hardwiring, it can be difficult to get out of our own way and double down with the third that are our jam. So think about that for a second. Do you keep yourself a little distant from that third? Do you hold yourself back even just a bit from the people who truly deeply love and care about you the most? I know I can do that, have done that. Like I've done that as recently as last week. (laughs) I have found it's sometimes easier to engage with people I don't know as well, right? People who are maybe somewhat transient in my life and they're just passing through. I don't know that there's anything to do with this information so much as it's that, right? It's information. It's interesting. It's just good to know what we're up to. So I was talking to a couple of clients this week. A couple of them were really struggling at work. One with a boss, one with a coworker, both at work. And in both cases, these clients were really trying to convince these people who were in the two thirds groups, right? Either neutral people or dislikes to become part of the love group. And in both cases, they were completely missing the value they have to offer at work right, to the organization, their overall effectiveness, and how valuable they can be when they go all in with what they know works for them. And of course, they were feeling terrible because they were finding themselves immersed in the two-thirds instead of engaging with the one-third. It's a losing game for everyone involved. And I was talking to another client kind of had this rule of thirds on my mind. So I was gathering up some intel this week. Talked to another client who was struggling with a neighbor, trying to figure out how to gel with that crowd and how to get all the families together so the kids could play and the adults could hang out. Wouldn't that just all be sweet? And she kept bumping up against the reality that this crew was a mixture of people who were neutral, meaning they were acquaintances, but she just didn't have any real friendship chemistry with any of them. And some of them were people she outright disliked, right? They were people that maybe seemed fine on paper. There was no horrible thing that anyone had done. They were just people she didn't see eye to eye with on important topics. They weren't people she connected with in any real way. And I suggested that she let herself keep them in the two thirds of people who she didn't like, right? Or were just neutral about. And it was like a light bulb. She'd had herself convinced that this needed to work, right? It was like because of geography, because of the neighborhood and the school and the church and the whole deal. But she hadn't entertained the idea that maybe they could all coexist without forcing that one third magical love friendship. They didn't all need to engage in the nonsense of trying to convert each other into the one third. They could just be. Now, a common thing that comes up when people kind of hear this and they start really recognizing the two-thirds is that people will start fearing they won't find their one-third. It's like they look out at the world and all they see are the two-thirds of dislikes and apathetics. And I just want to leave you with this for today. Your people are out there. I promise you that. You may have to open yourself up to some new places or activities. You may have to get curious and resourceful about where your people hang out. Like, Are they hiking? Are they at coffee shops? Are they going to yoga studios? Are they taking cooking classes? Do they join the PTA? Are they going to happy hour after work? What do they do? You also may have to take off some of your blinders and reconsider what exactly you are expecting because people come to us in a variety of ways and sometimes it's very surprising. There's no step-by-step paint-by-number formula for finding your people, but I've found that just like there are people out there who are not your people, there are definitely people out there who are. So look around at work, in your community, where you volunteer, at your gym or yoga studio. Are there old friendships that you maybe want to rekindle? 
Are you related to some of the people that you really want to be friends with? And you're overlooking them as just your sister or your in-law or whatever. Are there colleagues from previous jobs? Maybe there's people who work at shops that you frequent. Or maybe there's friends of friends that you could get to know. That's a trick that I played actually in the past couple of years was meeting some of the friends of my friends. Expanding our network that way. The idea that your people aren't out there will block all of this so fast. So don't buy that idea. It's just a thought. If you convince yourself there are people out there, you will go find them, right? Open your eyes to see who is already around you. Go online, join a new club, get clever here. So the rule of thirds, a third of them will hate you. A third of them will be totally meh. And a third of them will love you. And same for you, right? Seek out the third that really works. Focus your attention there. In your work, in your effort, in your energy, in your attention. Be willing to go all in where it matters most. Let go of the hustling and the convincing. There's just no need to do it. You don't want to be hustled or convinced to like somebody or to move from like the apathetic bucket or the dislike bucket into the love bucket of somebody else. So don't do that with others. Refocus yourself on the third that you want. It's so, so fulfilling. It'll lead towards such a satisfying way of living your life. All right, my friend, that's it for today. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you again at the same time, same place next week for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't and there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject. 